Ladies and gentlemen, warmly welcome to Around the World Advancing Gene and Cell Therapies in China. Thanks very much for joining this meeting. This virtual program is being hosted by the American Society of Gene and Cell Therapy. Today, speakers from China will share their expertise in development of vaccines and gene therapies. The first speaker from Sichuan University is Professor Xia Wei Wei. She will present the advancement of protein vaccine for COVID-19. The second speaker from Peking University is Professor Chen Qi Yi, and he will bring us the new RNA-based editing technology to treat the nonsense mutations associated diseases. And the third speaker from East China University of Science and Technology is Professor Xiao Xiao. He has a lot of experience on basic research and clinical transformation of AAV-based gene therapy. So he will share his ex expertise on that. Very appreciate above three speakers and thank ASGCT and my colleagues to organize this symposium. Hope everyone could benefit from this meeting. Thank you all. Uh, hello, everyone. It is my honor to be here in the American Society of Gene and Cell Therapy virtual meeting. Today, I'd like to share some work that our group have done in the field of COVID-19 vaccine development. Uh, I'm Xiao Wei from the State Key Laboratory of Biotherapy, West China Hospital, Sichuan University. Here is the outline for my presentation. Our group mainly focus on these four areas of the work concerned with COVID-19. Various recombinant uh, neutralizing monoclonal antibodies and vaccines against SARS-CoV-2 have been developed promptly by different global efforts. By the end of September 2022, there were 371 vaccine candidates against SARS-CoV-2 including 172 vaccines in clinical trials and 199 vaccines in preclinical development. Our group also put a lot of effort into developing the efficient COVID-19 vaccine, especially the recombinant protein vaccine, with broad protective uh, effects against all the variants. We also develop intranasal vaccines with new adjuvants. We explore the mechanisms for SARS-CoV-2 infection. Our group also established the animal model for COVID-19 induced ARDS and utilize it too for new drug screening. Since the outbreak of the disease, COVID-19 seriously threatened human life and health. It can hardly and with the emergence of different variants over time. In the past two years, several variants, such as the Delta and Omicron variant, have emerged with higher transmissibility, immune invasion, and drug re resistance, leading to higher mortality in the population. The State Key Laboratory of Biotherapy in Sichuan University is one of the earliest team to participate in the vaccine development since January 2020. As the pandemic unfolded, more than 100 researchers and students have worked on designing different types of COVID-19 vaccines in State Laboratory of Biotherapy. And our group has focused on the design and evaluation of the recombinant protein vaccine to combat COVID-19. In the July of 2020, I have published the results of our first generation protein vaccine candidate in Nature as a corresponding author. It is generally known that SARS-CoV-2 uses the receptor binding domain of the spike protein to engage with the uh, receptor angiotensin converting enzyme 2 AC2 on host cells. Therefore, we generated a recombinant vaccine comprised um, 
this residues uh, uh, 300 uh, uh, 3192545 of the RBD of the spike protein. And the signal peptide sequence was added to ensure efficient protein secretion during the production. The vacuole virus expression system was shown to express the various proteins uh, used in our study as this is a commercially feasible system and can manufacture the candidate vaccine at a commercial scale. And the vaccines generated using this system are generally folded in the correct conformation of the protein. In fact, this technology was used in several commonly used vaccine products, including some of the vaccine against human papilloma virus which causes cervical cancer and vaccines against influenza that are currently in use in Europe and in the USA. Recombinant RBD was successfully obtained from the cell culture supernatant and purified to high homogeneity. The purity of the final protein preparation in our study was more than uh, 90 Eight percent, and aluminum precipitation was selected to serve as a vaccine adjuvant on the basis of its effectiveness and safety. The recombinant vaccine induces a potent functional antibody response in immunized mice, rabbits, and non-human primates as early as seven or fourteen days after the injection of a single vaccine dose. The sera from the immunized animals could block the binding of the RBD to AC2 and neutralize the infection with uh, SARS-CoV-2 pseudovirus and live viruses in vitro. Notably, vaccination also provided protection in non-human primates uh, against an in vivo challenge with SARS-CoV-2. And additionally, we revealed that several immune pathways and CD4 uh, lymphocytes are involved in the induction of the vaccine antibody response. Our findings highlight the importance of the RBD domain in the design of SARS-CoV-2 vaccines and provide a rationale for the development of a protective vaccine through the induction of antibodies against the RBD domain. Based on this vaccine and the plant form of bacterial virus expression system, 11 researchers from our lab, including me, have co-founded a company named Westovac Farm. In the past three years, the vaccine has been approved by China Food and Drug Administration and completed the phase one to phase three clinical trials involving more than 40,000 people, which showed good safety and significant protective effect against uh, SARS-CoV-2 variants. Notably, our vaccine also entered the clinical trial in Japan, and this is the first in nation. Despite the first generation of our RBD vaccine, we continued the investigation on vaccines for emerging variants. This is one of the representative work we have done when the alpha and beta variants were dominant ones in 2020. Um, bivalent vaccine, which exhibited the ideal neutralization properties against Y type and the beta variant, as well as other uh, variants were, was investigated in this study. From 2021, Omicron variant has quickly become the dominant type among the previous circulating variants worldwide. Omicron variant harbors more than uh, 30 substitutions, deletions, insertions in a spike, including 15 substitutions in receptor binding domain. According to our previous study, we think that spike is prioritized for vaccine development. Therefore, we constructed recombinant protein vaccines composed of MF59 adjuvant and Omicron S1 protein, 
or Y-type S1 protein as control. The mice were immunized by, with both uh, protein vaccine candidates on, uh, for three times. And the 14 days after the last uh, administration, it is found that S1 Y-type protein induced a significantly higher neutralization uh, antibody against the prototype alpha and the delta pseudoviruses than the, S, uh, than the S1 Omicron protein. Unexpectedly, the neutralization potency of the S1 Omicron immunized serum was inefficient against the Omicron pseudovirus. Moreover, the serum from S1 Omicron immunized mice also displayed poor neutralization ability against the other uh, detected pseudoviruses. Moreover, germinal center uh, B cells can differentiate into antibodies secreting long-lived plasma cells and memory B cells, which is regulated by T follicular helper cells. The percentage of the TFH and the GCB cells in S1 wild type group were remarkably elevated compared to PBS and S1 Omicron group. Moreover, Omicron S1 elicited a significantly weaker T cell response while compared to the wild type S1 protein induced ones. Therefore, these results revealed that Omicron S1 protein might not be the best antigen to, for vaccine development for the variants. Some optimization strategies might be carefully considered when designing and developing protein vaccines against Omicron. Actually, in the meantime, we discovered that antigen containing RBD sequence of the Delta variant initiates efficient protective effect against Omicron. So we have developed our second generation of the recombinant vaccine. We developed a subunit vaccine by directly uh, linking the sequence of RBD derived, derived from uh, Delta variant and HR1 and HR2 sequence in SARS-CoV-2 is uh, S2 subunit in, in a tandem matter, manner, which can self-assemble into a trimer, and it is named RBDHR trimer. The induction of sustained humoral immune response with broad spectrum neutralizing activities was observed in mice and rabbits immunized with RBDHR trimer vaccine. In addition, it can be used as a candidate for heterologous third dose booster. In the next set of experiments, we found that mutations of 452 and 478 both benefit vaccination induced antibody response against Omicron and Delta variants. These two mutations seem to benefit RBD uh, antigenicity, interestingly, although there is no 452 mutation on the om Omicron variant, we noticed that both the Delta-specific 452 mutation and the Omicron-specific 493 mutation were located on a small two-stranded beta sheet in the middle of the RBD external subdomain. In addition, those mutations introduced a basic grinding group to the beta sheet. The two amino acid uh, substitutions might result in certain similarities in the epitope characteristics targeting the beta sheet, benefiting cross neutralization of RBD 452 which are immunized sera against uh, Omicron. In addition, robust T cell responses induced by our vaccine were also manifested by increased numbers of RBD-specific uh, memory T cells. RBD HR trimer with adjuvant remarkably increased the frequency of TFH cells. 
and the GCV cells in spleen. Next, we evaluated the in vitro efficacy of the vaccine against Omicron. Transgenic mice were challenged with Omicron variant while intranasal roots uh, after three times of vaccination. RBV HR trimer vaccine completely prevented the infection of Omicron as well as Delta variants in mice and non-human primates. The second generation of the recombinant vaccine has also been approved for clinical trial in China and Mexico. Despite the intramuscularly immunized vaccine, we are interested in the development of intranasal vaccines because we see that vaccination today failed to prevent the virus infection through the upper respiratory tract, which is partially due to the absence of mucosal immunity activation. This graph is showing how mucosal immune responses induced by intranasal vaccination. We think the lymphoid tissues and the uh, IgA secreting B cells SIJ antibodies are very important. And the tissue resident memory cells, TRM, in the airways and the lungs are vital for preventing respiratory virus infection. The adjuvants are critical in the development of the intranasal vaccine to activate mucosal immunity. Therefore, to improve the efficacy of the vaccine, and seek a novel adjuvant that can stimulate both humoral and cellular immunity, we investigated the potential of series of cantionic nanocarriers as adjuvants of the recombinant vaccine. When RBD vaccine was intranasally administered, the increase of total antibody levels, the RBD-specific IgG titers in the serum reached a peak when animals were vaccinated using PEI, polyethylene, uh, acyl enamine as an adjuvant. Functional antibody was also induced by PEI to block the uh, RBD binding to AC2. Cantionic nanocarriers such as PEI helped enhance the activation of cytotoxic CD8 T cells and CD4 T helper arm, as well as memory T cells. We next immunized mice with the PEI-RBD intranasal vaccine and monitored the long-term immunogenicity against both wild-type and mutant strains of SARS-CoV-2, including Omicron variants. Uh, three, uh, 365 days after the prime immunization with PBS RBD alone or PEI RBD, serum samples were collected to assess the humoral immune responses. The intranasal immunization with PEI adjuvanted RBD, but not RBD alone, induced high levels of long lasting RBD specific IgG antibodies in serum. The long-term increase in serum IgG is correlated with an increase in IgG secreting non-lived plasma cell in the bone marrow. Also immunized with PIRBD elicited high levels of RBD-specific IgA antibodies in serum and BAL on day 365 indicating the induction of potent and enduring mucosal immunity. PIRBD immunization effectively neutralized the infection of uh, Omicron pseudovirus. These results revealed that PI adjuvanted RBD vaccine can induce robust, broad, and long-lasting antibody responses against multiple variant strains of SARS-CoV-2, both locally and systemically. To assess T-cell responses in the lungs, uh, uh, mice intranasally immunized with the vaccine were sacrificed one year after the first vaccination. It is reported that lung CDA-TRM 
cells are indispensable for the induction of heteros subtyptic protection against respiratory pathogens. Therefore, CD8 TRM establishment after mucosal vaccination can hopefully provide cross protection against the SARS CoV 2 infection in the lungs for a long time. And CD4 T cells play vital roles in the formation of functional lung CD8 TRMs during viral infection and vaccination. Intranasal nasal uh, immunization with PIRBT vaccine successfully is established uh, long-term mucosal immunity by induction of the balanced CD4 and CD8 TRM cell responses in lung. It is also found that intranasal administration of the PIRBD can substantially enhance the magnitude, functionality, and longevity of both CD4 and CD8 T cells in the lungs. Finally, the long-term safety issue of the intranasal vaccine was also evaluated. And here is how the intranasal vaccine looks, and we are still optimizing it. Uh, here is another our very recent work by introducing the novel adjuvants to improve the efficiency of intranasal vaccine. We prepared an intranasal vaccine containing anti-olic cross-linked carbon dots and the, the SARS-CoV-2 antigen RBDHR. We first synthesized the cantionic cross-linked carbon dots, the CCDs, using a linker to collect CDs through a simple ring opening reaction, which can attract RBDHR with anionic polypeptides and form nanoparticles by inextrostatic interactions. Nanoparticles could protect RBDHR from enzymatic degradation during the intranasal immunization. Animals were intranasally immunized three times. We observed that antigen-specific IgD titers in the serum were orders of magnitude higher when RBDHR was administered with CCD than when uh, RBDHR alone in both mice and rabbits. The serum from the immunized animals with CCD adjuvanted RBDHR broadly protected against the infection with both the white type and the common mutant of SARS-CoV-2 including alpha, beta, delta, and omicron variants. The proportion of uh, the production of uh, antigen-specific IgA antibodies was also observed. Furthermore, the mice were challenged intranasally with uh, live SARS-CoV-2 omicron variant, and the histopathological evaluation revealed the effective protection of the CCD RBDHR vaccine against an infection. It is also found that uh, CCD RBDHR immunization induces local T and B cell responses. Next, our results showed that a CCD RBDHR vaccine could target the professional antigen presenting cells, namely the dendritic cells. Uh, firstly, immune cell recruitment in adrenaline cervical lymph nodes after the CCD immunization significantly increased. CCD RBDHR immunization induced the mutation of the maturation of the DC and the stimulation of BMDCs by CCD in vitro led to the cell activation determined by cytokine profiles. The uh, proliferation of both CD4 and CD8 T cells were determined after co-incubation with the CCD RBDHR pre-stimulated DCs. Notably, we also discovered that in addition to dendritic cells, CCD adjuvanted uh, RBDHR vaccine could also target nasal epithelial cells. Here is the immunofluorescent images of nasal mucosa harvested from the immunized mice at 12, uh, 24 hours. The uptake of RBDHR by primary nasal epithelial cells was assessed. The maturation of mouse 
nasal epithelial cells was induced by CCD 24 hours after immunization as determined by the increased expression of the CD40, CD80, CD86, and MHC2 molecules. Next, nasal epithelial cells were isolated and incubated with the recently labeled RBDHR with or without CCD for 24 hours. And the MHC level in uh, uh, epithelial cells increased with the uh, increased secretion of the IL-6 in a supernatant. Most primary nasal epithelial cells were isolated and stimulated with PBS, or CCD, or RBDHR for 24 hours, followed by co-culture with splenic uh, T cells, which led to the pro proliferation of T cells in CCD RBDHR treated group. Collectively, this data strongly supported the role of uh, NEC as potent antigen presenting cells that can present antigens and activate T cells at local sites. And then all we also finally, finally uh, explored how CCD promotes antigen binding to epithelial cells. Considering the cationic property of CCD, we hypothesized that CCD may promote antigen binding by interfering with anionic glycoproteins such as sialic acid. We proved that induction of the humoral immune response by CCD RBDHR is dependent on the early binding of antigens to nasal epithelial cells by our sialic acids. And CCD is a promising candidate for intranasal vaccine development for both targeting dendritic cells and nasal uh, epithelial cells. Uh, our group have also done some work on the mechanisms of SARS-CoV-2 infection. This is a study concerned with neutrophil netosis and uh, virus infectivity. Surprisingly, we observed that histones released from the neutrophil netosis enhanced the infectivity of SARS-CoV-2. And our hypothesis is that positively charged histones are likely to bind to negatively charged viral subunits of the host cell membrane, thus facilitating the recognition and membrane fusion, fusion process of SARS-CoV-2 with a host cell. It is found that histones can increase the effectivity of SARS-CoV-2 viruses and pseudovirus to cells and in the AC2-dependent manner. And we next found that histone H3 and H4 can strongly bind to S2 part of the SARS-CoV-2. And we focused on the negatively charged amino acids, which was di divided into two groups, that is MUT1 and MUT2. And interestingly, the variation of the four sites could block the increase of infection caused by histone. And these results showed that the endogenous positive charge histone H3 and H4 can bind specifically to S2 part of the SARS-CoV-2. To investigate how proteins promote the viral infection in host cells, we further studied the histone cell binding sites. Sialic acid is responsible for the increased infectivity, whereas heparin was not associated with that. And we further showed that histone H3 and H4 subunits can promote the membrane fusion process between virus and cell membrane. We further uh, Finally, we observed the histone and virus S2 protein complex in vivo, blocking the netosis and sialic acid, both reduced viral sgRNA load and reduced apoptotic cells. So in this study, we demonstrate that the histone H3 and H4 can selectively bind to S2 of the SARS-CoV-2 with four acidic amino acids. 
and we emphasize that sialic acid on host cells is a key molecule to which histone forms a bridge from as to promote the membrane fusion process, thereby enhancing SARS-CoV-2 infectivity. And we have also conducted some work on the establishment of COVID-19 animal models. And we also generated the mouse model of COVID-19 under general laboratory condition that captures multiple characteristics of SARS-CoV-2 induced uh, acute respiratory distress syndrome observed in humans. Based on the animal models for the ARDS, we did some new drug screening. We found that the trip, uh, tryptorin TP, a traditional Chinese medicine, well encapsulated into liposomes, exhibits effective antiviral and anti-inflammatory effects in severe COVID-19 mice. Okay, due to the time, I might come to the end of my presentation. And again, it's really my honor to share the work uh, our group have conducted here today. And finally, I want to give a brief introduction of my lab. And I'm Xiaowei Wei from the Western China Hospital, Sichuan University. My research interests include uh, COVID-19 vaccines, cancer vaccines, the novel adjuvants, and as well as pulmonary inflammation and fibrosis. We always recruit the postdocs all over the world, and uh, you are very welcome to join our research group. If you have any questions on my work or my presentation, to presentation today, please send me an email, and I'll be happy to establish contacts with the colleagues and discuss scientific issues. Uh, that's all for it. Thank you again. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Chen Shiyi from Peking University in China. It's my great pleasure to have this opportunity to um, give a presentation in the American Society of Gene and Cell Therapy Conference. My lab is interested in RNA modifications and uh, uh, base editing technologies. Today, I would like to share with you a new RNA editing technology uh, recently developed uh, in my lab. Nonsense mutations are uh, uh, single point mutations that introduce in frame pre termination, termina uh, pre termination codons in MRI coding regions. PDC could trigger nonsense mediated MRI decay for MRI and result in premature translation termination thereby generate unfunctional proteins and eventually cause um, uh, severe genetic dis uh, uh, disorders. According to the uh, Human Gene Mutation Database, um, uh, more than 20% of the disease-associated single base pair uh, substitutions are nonsense mutations, which account for approximately 11% of all described gene lesions uh, that cause human-inherited diseases. For inherited disease in individual cases, the incidence of nonsense uh, mutations can also be very high. Famous genetic diseases can be caused by nonsense mutations. Uh, for instance, the well-known uh, cystic fibrosis and uh, um, uh, spinal uh, muscular uh, atrophy. Uh, there are also uh, many other less famous genetic disorders uh, which are caused by nonsense mutations. Uh, for instance, the nonsense mutations of the ALDOB gene uh, perturb its production so as to influence uh, fructose metabolism, causing the hereditary uh, fructose intolerance. Uh, in another example, uh, the uh, peroxisome biogenesis disorder can be caused by the PEX7 uh, nonsense mutation. To treat uh, these uh, nonsense mutation related diseases, scientists have developed uh, several ways to achieve PTC read through. Uh, small molecule drugs, uh, which are shown on the uh, uh, left, are found to achieve read through effect. It was first discovered that antibiotics such as uh, uh, G418 uh, could achieve read through of PTC sites by affecting ribosome fidelity but it is not specific for um, PDC sites and show unstable effect for different sequences. 
although PTC-124 and other small molecules um, were obtained by further screening, uh, uh, they can effectively reduce toxicity. Uh, however, they still lack specificity and show toxicity after prolonged use. Um, besides small molecule drugs, suppressor TRAs um, have been developed to recognize nonsense mutations and have been used to achieve PDC refill. However, it still lacks sequence specificity. Uh, more recently, uh, ADAR, uh, which is a uh, you know uh, uh, adenine deaminase working on uh, uh, RA, uh, ADAR-based RA uh, editing has been uh, developed and uh, is a very promising uh, technology to treat nonsense mutation. It introduces uh, A2G in the MRA uh, PDC sites so as to achieve um, a read-through. Uh, sequence visible A2I editing has been uh, realized in mouse models of human diseases. However, these uh, ADAR-based RA uh, uh, editors have the potential um, proximal and uh, distal off-target editing problems. Therefore, um, specific and uh, safe uh, strategies that can efficiently edit RA basis with minimal consequences by off-target editing are highly desired. In 2011, um, uh, Yi Tao Yu at the uh, University of Rochester found that replacing the uh, uridine site, uh, the uridine uh, um, uh, uh, nucleoside uh, with uh, pseudouridine in all three stop codons can unexpectedly, unexpectedly suppresses translational termination and the read-through effect uh, can be as, as, far, uh, as high as about 70%. Uh, different amino acids uh, are inserted at the stop codons showing some uh, extent of specificity during the read-through event. Uh, this pioneering work indicated that the pseudo-U modification at the PDC sites could be harnessed as a promising opportunity against the nonsense and mutation induced human diseases. So what is uh, uh, SUDI reading? Uh, I'll give you a brief introduction. It is a rotation isomer of uh, regular uridine and is commonly found in abundant non-coding RNAs, including ribosome RNA, tRNA, and small nuclear RNA. It was first discovered back in the 1951, also known as the fifth nucleotide of RNA. It is uh, uh, dynamic and more recently been found to be prevalent, prevalent in endogenous MRA. Uh, site as well. Um, more recently, uh, SUDU uh, uh, has been and its derivative have been shown to be very important for uh, mRNA vaccine. Uh, for instance, um, um, uh, SUDU modified mRNA um, vaccine can suppress its RNA recognition by taller receptors uh, and additional uh, you know, immune factors. Uh, and uh, you know represents a major breakthrough in the design and formulation of uh, uh, non-immunogenic mRNA vaccine with increased translational capacity and biological stability. Uh, SUDU is uh, catalyzed by either standalone SUDU synthesis or by an RNA-guided enzyme complex. For instance, site-specific SUDU duration of ribosomal RNA and the small nuclear RNA is catalyzed uh, primarily by uh, box H and ACA uh, snow RNA uh, P complex. In this complex, this HACA box snow RNA function as the RNA guide through base pairing um, with the target RNA and associates with four evolutionarily conserved uh, core uh, proteins, which are uh, DKC1, uh, GAR1, NOP10, and NHP2. Among them, DKC1 is the uh, catalytic uh, 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 subunit. Um, thus, SUDU, uh, SNOW RNA guided pseudoutilation at PTCs may offer a promising opportunity for RNA based therapy against the nonsense mutation um, induced human diseases. Uh, so we decided to develop a new RNA-based editing tool based on the uh, SNRP system to achieve efficient and specific editing of PDC sites um, at the RNA level. 
we term the proposed technology uh, restart, which is short for R editing to specific transcripts for pseudo-uridine mediated PTC read-through. Uh, this restart technology leverages the cellular uh, HACA box snerf machinery for RNA editing, uh, which is analogous to an endogenous RNA targeting CRISPR Cas system in that it simultaneously processes RNA targeting and editing functions. Uh, it is programmable and hence can be designed to target specifically for PTC, but not normal stop codons. Uh, the guide Snow RNA is short and the restart system is easy for delivery. Um, because the system relies on pseudo-uridine modification, we can also use existing methods developed by my lab and others in the epitranscriptomic fields to uh, comprehensively uh, detect uh, transcriptomized pseudo-uridine modification and hence uh, achieving evaluation uh, of the on and off-target editing efficiency. To test the idea of restart, we first uh, um, designed a PTC reporter by uh, uh, inserting a um, uh, uh, on this uh, left side uh, by inserting a uh, stop codon uh, into the uh, venous fluorescent protein. PTC read-through event could be visualized by uh, venous fluorescence and measured by relative venous expression cell percentage as well as relative uh, intensity. We then designed the SNOW RNA to target the uh, sequence. We selected five um, abundant um, SNOW RNA uh, with stable secondary structure. After expressing the reporter and the um, uh, guide uh, SNOW RNA in the cells, uh, it is very exciting for us to see that PTC read-through uh, occurring in the reported system uh, as indicated by the, 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 the green signal uh, on the slide. And uh, uh, com uh, compared with the positive control, the relative venous positive cell is only about you know ten percent. Uh, it is uh, you know uh, not high, but uh, you know serves as a very good starting point. So we termed uh, this technology restart uh, v one or version one. We further sought for factors that can further improve the editing efficiency of restart. Uh, there. Uh, exists uh, uh, two protein coding DKC1 isoforms uh, inside of human cells. Uh, DKC1 isoform 1, uh, which is shown in blue, um, uh, gives rise to a canonical form of protein containing uh, bipartite N terminal and C terminal nuclear localization signal, now, which is then concentrated in the nucleola uh, where ribosome RNA biogenesis and modification take place. In addition, uh, uh, transcript of the gene can be alternative, alternatively spliced to give DKC1 isoform 3, which lacks the C terminal uh, uh, nuclear uh, localization signal and uh, hence has cytoplasmic localization as well, in addition to uh, the nuclear localization. DKC1 isoform 1 is expressed at approximately 10 to 20 fold. Uh, you know, uh, greater level compared to the isoform 3, but both uh, isoforms uh, seem to be, you know, ubiquitously expressed in cells and the human tissues. Uh, we wondered whether or not uh, such, you know, uh, differential localization of the enzyme could uh, influence the editing efficiency of our restart te uh, um, technology. And uh, indeed, uh, we found that uh, uh, while DKC1 isoform, uh, isoform 1 of expression only slightly increased the relative, you know, um, um, uh, 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 fraction of EGF, EGFP uh, positive cells, uh, something like, you know, 20% uh, compared to the, con uh, to the control cells. Um, uh, interestingly, in the DKC1 isoform 3 of expression cells, the relative, you know, uh, fraction of EGFP positive cells were greatly uh, uh, increased by, you know, something like 200% uh, um, uh, compared to the, you know, uh, original condition. Uh, encouraged by the, this uh, observation, we uh, went ahead to compare our restart technology with uh, Repair, which is a CAS13 uh, based A2I editing tools uh, previously developed by the Fenzhang Laboratory. Uh, we designed uh, CRI targeting the 
uh, uh, UAG uh, uh, PDC stock columns and observed about uh, 60 percent EGLP positive cells, uh, which is very comparable to the um, uh, restart technology. To determine whether the um, box uh, HACA SNRP uh, machinery is actually responsible for the guide I mediated PDC read in the restart technology, we carried out uh, restart in DKC1, um, uh, carry out in DKC1 stable knockdown uh, cells. We found the very low to no PDC read through events uh, in the knock, uh, uh, knockdown cells. We also show that uh, uh, both the uh, uh, H box and the uh, um, uh, ACA box of the guide eye are very important in the uh, 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 editing function since mutating or deleting either box greatly reduce or even abolish the, uh, the editing activity. Uh, we next validated that the restart technology uh, mediated read-through uh, is indeed caused by site-specific pseudo-regulation modification. Uh, we used the uh, optimized the targeted seek uh, deep amplicon sequencing approach developed recently by my lab. Uh, we first used a chemical, you know, to specifically label pseudo modification, and uh, the pseudo uh, the lab chemically labeled pseudo adducts can cause mutation or uh, deletion signal at or around the pseudo site in the CDNA during uh, uh, reverse transcription. Thus, you know, the overall mutation and deletion rate of our target site is used as an approximation to reflect the pseudo modification level. Um, we were able to detect uh, the mutation and deletion uh, rate for all th uh, three stop codons. Restart version one and restart version two exhibited about 5% and 15% uh, 15, uh, 15, uh, mutation and deletion rate respectively. Uh, it is worth mentioning that uh, this rate is uh, a severe underestimation of the actual studio modification level, considering the partial um, uh, uh, chemical labeling uh, yield uh, uh, and additional uh, factors. We thus conclude that the studio uh, restart can successfully induce site-specific uh, modification inside of the cells, but the accurate uh, stoichiometry information awaits uh, uh, more quantitative pseudo detection methods in the future. To examine whether restart technology can e enable effective editing on endogenous transcripts, we designed the 11 uh, guide uh, RA, which is based on the guide RAAC 19, uh, uh, to target uh, UAA, UAG, or UGA contexts in the uh, untranslated or coding regions of uh, five. Uh, 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 endogenous transcripts. Uh, remarkably, all the 11 targeted uh, uh, urine sites were efficiently edited by both Restart V1 and uh, V2 system in 293T cells, with a mutation and deletion rate ranging from 6 to 30 percent by uh, targeted MP count sequencing. We further tested the Restart system in primary human dermal fibroblasts primary human uh, bronchial epithelial cells and the lymphocyte. Uh, through AAV transduction, we also uh, observed uh, um, uh, efficient uh, uh, editing uh, for the three different primary uh, cell system, uh, which ranges from eight to 14% in uh, HDF, um, about uh, 18 to 34% in HB cells and uh, about 27% uh, in, uh, in B lymphocyte. To investigate whether restart could be used to correct disease relevant uh, nonsense mutations, we constructed PTC disease reporters uh, in which a disease gene containing the PTC site um, uh, was followed by an EGRP. Uh, we designed a, a guide RA based on the ACA19 construct and the AC36 uh, uh, construct, uh, targeting the PEC7R232X, uh, which is a hotspot mutation for the gene. We found that uh, both the restart V1 and V2 could efficiently uh, uh, enable PDC read-through, as indicated by the you know, EGIP uh, expression uh, during the facts analysis. 
uh, res results are also confirmed by a Western uh, plotting experiment with a rescue efficiency of about 32% of full-length protein. Considering that a restart can induce um, efficient PTC breakthrough of this particular hotspot mutation in a reported assay, we further went ahead to test the eff efficacy of restart in mediating functional re through of endogenous PEG7232X uh, uh, mRNA transcript. PEG7 encodes the uh, receptor for PTS2 uh, targeted um, peroxisome matrix enzyme. Uh, we generate uh, PEG7 uh, R232X uh, HAG293T cell model, which is which we call A3. Uh, using the latest uh, prime editing tool developed uh, by the uh, David Liu lab, uh, we transfected cells uh, with PTS2 uh, scarlet as a reporter for PTS2 mediated protein import into uh, peroxisomes. Uh, expression of the restart uh, V2 system uh, resulting in restor restoration of the peroxisomal PTS2 mediated protein import in the A3 cell, as indicated indicated by the appearance of the uh, punctate uh, uh, peri, uh, peroxisomal of fluorescence. Thus, the, this result um, demonstrated that the restart technology can indeed mediate PDC read-through of endogenous MRI uh, uh, and, and uh, 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 generate the rescue of a functional uh, protein and uh, uh, generate um, the production of full-length protein and the rescue function. To demonstrate that uh, Restart is a platform technology that has wide applicability, uh, we then uh, investigated whether uh, this technology could restore the function of genes with nonsense mutations in additional gene uh, uh, disease-relevant cell models. In this example, uh, we turn our attention to CFTR R553X, uh, which is also a hotspot mutation uh, for cystic fibrosis. Uh, we, we first chose uh, 293 T cells transfected with a CFTR R5, uh, 5, uh, 3X uh, expressing uh, a plasmid. This method has commonly been used to study the functional CR, CFTR variants since wild type 293 T cells do not express CFTR. Um, we explore the performance of restart to repair CFTR uh, R553X PDC site by electrophysiological assay, uh, which is the gold uh, standard for evaluating CFTR function. Uh, with Restart V2 uh, treatment, the, the function of um, uh, CFTR R553X was rescued uh, uh, to about 30 to 40 percent of the wild type level. Uh, we could observe significant uh, 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 chloride ion current increase upon CFTR agonist and specific inhibition of CFTR inhibitor. Uh, work is currently ongoing in my lab to apply a restart to endogenous CFTR transcripts in a more uh, relevant cell model. We further evaluated the therapeutic potential of restart in primary cells. Herder syndrome, which is the most severe subtype of M MPS1, is caused by the deficiency of uh, IDUA enzyme and the results in the accumulation of uh, uh, glycose amino glycans or GAGs uh, in the lysosomes. We chose the primary uh, mouse embryonic fibroblasts derived from a mouse model of Herder syndrome containing homozygous IDUA uh, WA392X uh, 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 mutation uh, as a disease cell model. GG accumulations were significantly uh, reduced, decreased for about 25% uh, uh, less compared to the uh, to the wild type uh, uh, to the to the mutant um, uh, cells, indicating um, successful partial uh, restoration of the IEUA activity. Mechanistically, we found that uh, a PDC rethrough mediated by restart acts synergistically with NMD inhibition. Uh, in the CFTR uh, W1282X expressing B cell, uh, we observed a strong NMD uh, compared with a wild type uh, uh, control. Uh, however, uh, uh, the introduction of the restart system significantly uh, led to significant increase in the expression um, of CFTR uh, gene, suggesting NMD inhibition by the restart technology. 
for the uh, MEF cell, we observe the strong NMD in the IDUA uh, W392X um, uh, uh, MEF compared to the wild type uh, control. However, uh, restart V2 uh, treatment also significantly increased the expression level of IDUA. Altogether, these results demonstrate that so the potential of restart in achieving functional rethrough in clinically relevant uh, uh, genetic diseases. Off-target could be an important issue for genome editing as well as RNA editing. To comprehensively evaluate the off-target effect of restart, uh, we conducted transcriptome wide surreal sequencing. Um, so uh, I showed you on this slide the two technologies developed in my laboratory. On the uh, left, uh, which we call CUSIC, is a methodology we developed in 2015. Uh, this method uh, uh, uses a chemically synthesized uh, CMC uh, derivative, which um, pre enriches SUDU containing RNA through biotin um, um, uh, pull down. Uh, uh, more recently, we developed a, a more quantitative SUDU sequencing technology, which we termed the PRIS. Uh, which potentially could be used uh, in the future for off-target evaluation of SUDU. Uh, using the existing CUSIC methodology, um, <clears throat> we were able to identify 36 and uh, uh, 239 and uh, 202 off-target uh, SUDU sites um, in the entire transcriptome in MRI and the non-coding eyes for the uh, restart V1 and V2 uh, system respectively. These sites demonstrate sequence motifs that strongly uh, resemble the on-target uh, sequence, which is very consistent with the idea that uh, they are dependent on the guide RNA. We conclude that uh, restart can uh, induce guide RNA dependent of targets. However, uh, while SUDU can generate, uh, uh, can suppress translation termination at the PT site, C sites, it does not recode sense codons. Therefore, unlike uh, ADAR-based methods that generate by standard and the distal off-target edits, uh, restart uh, induced uh, off-targets are generally benign. <clears throat> to further investigate whether or not uh, whether off-target uh, edits affect uh, uh, RNA expression levels, so we performed RNA sequencing. Uh, uh, we found that uh, off-target edits identified by CUSIC did not change uh, in RNA expression level in either the restart V1 or V2 uh, um, uh, systems. Uh, global R expression level uh, also remain unchanged. To examine whether or not the restart influence protein level, we performed a quantitative proteomics study and found that uh, you know, a restart system does not affect the protein abundance. The only you know, protein which showed a significant uh, uh, change of level is the uh, on target site in which we expect uh, the upregulation of protein due to the read-through uh, at the RNA level. Considering the relative um, uh, small size of the guide RNA, which is about uh, 130 nucleotide, we investigated uh, whether or not the restart system can be delivered into cells by either in vitro transcribed uh, 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 or chemically synthesized RNA molecules. We first uh, prepared a CAP-modified full-length uh, guide uh, RNA oligo uh, targeting the reporter uh, system via uh, uh, IVT. Uh, this represents a you know mini MRI, uh, and the entire you know production system it can be directly borrowed from the MRI vaccine field. Uh, 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 interestingly, uh, this mini MRI uh, showed IVT obtained RNA showed comparable PDC read-through efficiency compared to the genetically expressed. Um, uh, a guy I, uh, in the second uh, 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 attempt, uh, we, uh, exam we examined the possibility of using chemically synthesized short RNA articles. Uh, we found that uh, 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 this uh, article, which contained 2 prime O methylation and the phosphorothiolate linkage modification, exhibited a comparable also, you know, uh, comparable efficiency with a full length uh, a guide RNA, uh, uh, a genetically expressed guide RNA construct. Therefore, we conclude that uh, uh, our results show res uh, the research system hold great promise for the development of oligonucleotide-based therapeutic uh, reagents. So uh, this uh, restart uh, technology was published uh, uh, in Molecular Cell last year uh, as a cover image uh, showing the 
um, uh, Chinese uh, fable of uh, adding ice to a dragon. Uh, restart uh, could add uh, a pseudo modification to a specific PTC site in MRA, uh, resembling adding ice to a painted uh, a dragon, which looked like a single stranded MRA, and thus making it uh, come to life and uh, fly into the sky. Uh, to summarize, uh, the restart technology has uh, several advantages, such as small size, um, easy for delivery, um, uh, less or non-immunogenic, uh, sequence specific, benign of time effects. Uh, therefore, we conclude that it is a very promising RNA editing, editing tool for not only biology, uh, but also for therapeutic purposes. In the future, we will further optimize uh, restart technology so that it, it is more effective. We also plan to uh, apply it to animal disease models such as Herder syndrome to further demonstrate its therapeutic potential. Uh, finally, I would like to thank my collaborators, uh, Professor Liu uh, Hong and Professor Yang Hongshi. Uh, we also, uh, uh, I would also thank to my you know, uh, uh, lab members and also uh, uh, fundings. Uh, but I'll, and I would also like to thank you for your attention. Hello. Um, <clears throat> I'd like to take the, take this opportunity to thank the organizer for letting me share my experience uh, of gene therapy in China. Um, I've been working with AAD for many, many years, and actually I was, uh, I have been a uh, ASGCT member for many, many years since the beginning of the society. And sorry for my voice, I mean, I just had a, a flu, pretty bad flu, excuse me. Um, okay, first I'd like to uh, uh, declare a conflict of interest uh, I'm a co-founder and uh, also a chief scientific officer of Believe Biomed in Shanghai, in China. So this is a summary uh, by uh, the uh, ASCCT. Uh, you can see that uh, um, currently there are over 3,000 clinical trials going on, and uh, uh, many of them are cell therapy, RNA therapy, and also uh, gene therapy. And... Um, can see that uh, there are 24 or so uh, gene therapy product have been uh, approved for marketing. And this is not the most updated um, data. Um, this year, there are a few more will be approved. And you can see uh, gene therapy is making very fast progress. Um, here is the situation in China. And um, just like a uh, 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 situation globally and uh, gene therapy in China is also booming. And this is the data from uh, um, Chinese FDA. You can see that uh, um, for the active vivo gene therapy, especially for CAR T and CAR NK, there are over 200 or so, uh, close to 250 or so uh, CAR T clinical trials using a variety of uh, um, methods like uh, investigator initial clinical trial and also. Uh, some of the uh, clinical trials, uh, the PI have uh, um, communicated with uh, the Chinese FDA. There are 34 formal CAR-T IND application and 57 of them have been uh, uh, granted um, or cleared. Um, <clears throat> then most of them are for the uh, hematology cancer and three of them uh, have been approved for marketing, including uh, uh, a CAR-T product uh, license from Juno and uh, the other CAR-T uh, product license from uh, Kite. They're both for um, B-cell lymphoma and then B-cell leukemia. Um, for the in vivo gene therapy, um, there are over, from 2017 to 2022, there are over 38 IND applications and the 26 of them uh, have been approved. This is uh, data from last year. And uh, uh, in the recent year, uh, one year, there are 16 or so uh, uh, AAV gene therapy IND have been approved. You can see that uh, uh, the trend and the feature of gene therapy in China, there are quite a few of them. And 
first of all, uh, unlike uh, the ones uh, in the U.S. and also in uh, European, um, you know, biotech companies in China actually initiated the um, most of the gene and cell therapy clinical trial. When I was in the U.S., and most of the early stage gene therapy and the cell therapy clinical trial have been uh, sponsored and in initiated uh, in the university and the research institute. Uh, this is not a case in China, and the very few uh, institutes in China actually had a GMP facility and for uh, vector production. And uh, uh, the other thing is uh, um, the, for the funding for gene therapy and the cell therapy, and the funding is mostly from a venture capital investment instead of the government grants. Okay, so the other trend is that uh, um, there are two ways you can conduct a human gene therapy clinical trial. Um, the first is the uh, like uh, every, uh, like uh, in the U.S. and the Europe, you file a IND application to the Chinese FDA, it's called NMPA, the National Medical Product Administration. And it took um, about 60 work days to get approval or, or response from the, the China FDA. And the other way it's more popular, more commonly used is, is so-called investigator initiated clinical trial. And it's uh, um, sponsored by, by a company and also a, a hospital. The hospital grants the permission for the trial. So in, for most of the IIT clinical trial, you don't have to go to uh, the Chinese FDA to get uh, IND approval. So this has been done for a vast majority of the CAR-T clinical trials, over 300, 400 clinical trials for CAR-T has been done initially this way. After IIT, then some companies will uh, proceed to submit an IND application. Okay, so uh, a third trend is that uh, there are so many CDMO companies uh, just uh, formed in China in recent years. About five years ago, um, only uh, maybe two or three CDMO companies can make a clinical grade uh, uh, gene therapy vectors uh, such as AAV vector. But right now, there are over tens of uh, CDMO companies. They can make a GMP grade um, AAV vectors and a lentivirus vector and also uh, um, um, oncogenic uh, vectors. Um, then the other fact is that um, many startup gene therapy companies, they have their own uh, vector production facility and they don't use the CDMO for a variety of reasons. So this will make it extremely competitive and also uh, makes the, the resource um, redundant. And so this is a, a, a slide um, summarized by Shire. About 10 years ago, you can see that uh, for the global uh, gene therapy company distribution in um, China at the time only had maybe two or three um, a, a gene therapy companies. One of them was uh, a AAV company. But um, along with the heavy investment from the venture capital into gene therapy and the cell therapy, there are many uh, new uh, gene therapy uh, startup companies have formed in China. So this is an incomplete list of uh, um, gene therapy companies, not including those uh, CAR-T companies. You can see that uh, um, about 100 or so uh, um, gene therapy companies and more than half of them are actually using adenosocial virus as the, as the gene delivery tool. And many of them uh, are using the gene editing methods to uh, uh, treat genetic disease and other uh, indications. So you can see that um, the cell and the gene therapy area, it's developed really fast in China. And so let me uh, talk about a, a little bit about the AAV-based gene therapy in China. And you can see that currently, um, you know, to, up to date, there's 16 IND approved using AAV as the vector in China, and seven of them are eye disease related, if, such as the liver hereditary uh, optical neuropathy, and um, also the wet AMD and the RPE65, and also CPY4V2. Um, so uh, except the um, wet AMD, uh, other indications are monogenic. There are four hemophilia gene therapy clinical trials have been approved in China, and 
three for hemophilia B and one for hemophilia A. And three of uh, uh, type one SMA clinical trial have been approved and two used the intrathecal delivery system. The other used the uh, intra intravenous uh, delivery uh, method. And one Pompeii and one lipase deficiency, uh, just like a Glabera and the one uh, for hepatitis B uh, clinical trial have been approved in China for um, uh, gene therapy. And there are two clinical trials uh, actually have entered into late stage phase three clinical trial. And one is a liver hereditary optical neuropathy and it's an AAB2 based uh, uh, ND4 gene delivery by uh, Youth and uh, neuro, and the other uh, clinical trials, uh, hemophilia B. Uh, the drug name is uh, uh, BBM H901. It, it was engineered the AAV um, capsid and to express a part of a uh, hyperactive uh, F, F9 gene. And this uh, the company is uh, believed by my, that I co founded this company. And uh, in addition, there are many, many more IIT clinical trials for monogenic diseases and also neurodegenerative uh, diseases. And uh, um, overall, gene therapy is still very active in China. Okay, so let me uh, share a little bit of my own experience with you uh, during the hemophilia B gene therapy uh, development uh, in China. And so we started uh, uh, in 2019, in the late 2019, uh, with a uh, investigator initial clinical trial um, uh, in collaboration with uh, um, uh, China uh, Academy of uh, Medicine and Medical Sciences and the Peking Union Medical uh, Center and um, the hospital's attending blood disease uh, hospital. And uh, so we used uh, a vector called a uh, BBMH901, uh, and which is uh, engineered the AAV capsid express the part of a gene. And the vector dose was uh, five times 10 to the 12 per kilogram. It's by a simple IV injection. And the, the initial trial design is to follow the patients for uh, 52 weeks. Now, uh, some of the three of the patients have been followed up for over three years, and the seven of them have been followed up over two years. And so there are 12 patients were screened and the 10 of them were enrolled in the trial and it's a single dose. And so uh, uh, the clinical trial went very, very well. Um, so uh, this is uh, what happened and, um, you know, it's a simple IV injection and the clinical trial design is uh, um, uh, we uh, gave the uh, steroids on day minus seven. Then on the, uh, day zero, we started to uh, inject the, the AAV uh, intravenously. Then um, the, the visit was uh, um, uh, initially was um, weekly, then biweekly, then uh, um, four weeks apart, then uh, two months apart. And so, so it's a typical clinical trial design. Then. The reason we use uh, steroids uh, prophylactically is because um, uh, some of the patients may be difficult to follow up. And so we don't want to uh, lose those patients or lose some uh, side visit uh, or um, uh, hospital visit uh, when their uh, potentially liver enzyme is elevated and uh, uh, causes uh, um, reduction of the gene expression. So we basically uh, treat every patient with steroids. Uh, so we don't have to uh, follow them up uh, very closely in case uh, they could not pay a visit to the hospital. Okay, so the capsule was engineered um, through DNA shoveling and uh, was tested in the um, uh, primary human hepatocytes. And it's uh, uh, highly infectious when you compare it with AAV1, 2, 6, 7, 8, and 9, and other serotypes. And so this capsule has a lower neutralized antibody rates in monkeys and in humans, uh, the, the neutralized antibody rate is lower uh, for uh, than AAV8 and AAV9 in human patients in, in China. And so the vector was pre produced in-house and we started with uh, the triple plasma transfection. We made our own plasmid and uh, then 
the transfect in, uh, into a 293 suspension cells and up to 200 liters uh, uh, culture. And then 48 hours later, the cell was lysed and uh, passed through uh, affinity column and the chromatog uh, ion exchange chromatography. And um, then it was uh, uh, vialed um, uh, into the shooting um, uh, ample. And, we also do the quality control in-house, and uh, we uh, basically did a very extensive uh, uh, QC and the purity, uh, purity and also potency assay. And so this is the results of the 10 patients in the um, IIT clinical trial. And uh, as I mentioned, that uh, two of the three of the patients have been followed for over um, three years. The genes of Gene expression level is very consistent between 30 and 40 percent, very stable. And then the following seven patients have been uh, follow up for uh, over two years, and uh, you can see that again their um, gene expression level was uh, very stable. And uh, one of the patient had a lower uh, gene expression level, and his uh, um, uh, liver condition was not. Uh, was not good before enrollment. And in fact, uh, before AAV treatment, his uh, ALT and AST uh, were already above the normal level. However, after two years of uh, gene therapy, the reason uh, a hospital visit showed that his uh, factor nine was around eight to 10%. So uh, he never had any bleed or use of uh, recombinant proteins. So the mean uh, factor nine level is around 45% of normal. So the gene expression persisted very well. Then uh, the results were published in the um, uh, Lancet uh, hematology. And one of the patients actually went through a uh, total knee replacement therapy without using uh, recombinant factor nine. And uh, this, uh, this is the first case uh, after gene therapy for such a Large uh, surgery, and it was uh, the results were published in the, uh, in the New England Journal of Medicine. Um, then um, the clinical benefit uh, after gene therapy uh, for factor nine was uh, uh, profound, and you can see that um, uh, before uh, the this is the the annualized the bleed. You can see that um, before uh, the treatment, and the patient had many. Uh, um, uh, bleed um, after treatment. Um, there's only the first patient had one suspected that bleed, and then none of the patients uh, over all the years and had no bleed. So the analyze the bleed rate is almost zero. And and also the use of uh, recombinant protein or factor nine is a minimum. The first again is the first patient uh, doing the suspected. Uh, um, bleed and he used some um, plasma product for 10 times. And the target joints it were before gene therapy uh, was uh, uh, three, two, four, or something like that. And after gene therapy, the, all the, none of the joint had any uh, bleed or the target, the joint target is also zero. So the adverse effect is minimal. There is no grade three adverse effect. And there are some uh, um, unrelated uh, grade two uh, side effect. Okay, so overall the safety level it's uh, excellent. And uh, after talking to the Chinese FDA, we try to waive the non-human primate toxicology studies, but uh, we were not granted for that uh, um, waiver. So uh, we started to uh, uh, do a toxicology study in the in the monkeys. Initially, we did a non-GLP tox and injected the um, about the um, Five times uh, higher, lower the uh, high, those higher dose than uh, the clinical dose. You can see that uh, in the two monkeys, the factor nine gene expression went up uh, very, very high, and then it dropped a little bit and it remained around five hundred percent of normal. There is no blood clotting uh, in these monkeys, and there is a uh, later on we did a GLP tox uh, uh, using nine monkeys and the. Three of them are placebo, and uh, there are three low dose and three high dose. And um, after 13 weeks, the monkeys were sacrificed. And uh, um, uh, you know, four weeks and uh, 13 weeks, two time points. The 
the conclusion is that uh, there is minimal toxic uh, to toxicity and the gene expression persisted. So after that, and uh, we uh, started, uh, uh, we obtained a IND approval and then started to uh, do a phase one, two clinical trial. And six patients were enrolled and they're using the same five times 10 to the 12 so, uh, VG per kilogram. And uh, the patient were followed up for um, over a year, three of them reached uh, beyond uh, 50, 52 weeks. You can see that uh, one of them had gene expression around 140, the other is 26%, the, uh, the third one is a 54%. So the the average um, gene expression level is uh, similar to what uh, we have observed in the uh, investigator initiated clinical trial. So based on the 16 uh, patients' uh, safety data and also gene expression data and the therapeutic data. And uh, um, the Chinese FDA granted uh, phase three, uh, uh, the, the green light for phase three clinical trial. And so the liver enzyme uh, level for those uh, patients essentially are below the normal range. And there's slight elevation of the liver enzyme, but the now uh, very few of them actually uh, went above the uh, the normal limit, like 50 units or 40 units. And uh, so the phase three clinical trial is desi designed to enroll uh, more than 22 patients and using the same vector dose, uh, a single uh, virus uh, AAV injection in nine clinical trial centers and uh, nine hospitals uh, across China. And by the end of this month, maybe by the middle of this month, all patients will be injected and uh, the patients will be observed for uh, 52 weeks and the data will be summarized. And we will discuss with the Chinese FDA for um, BLA. Okay, so the conclusion is that uh, the first AAV based gene therapy, liver chobic uh, AAV vector, is a very uh, effective and also safe uh, in the hemophilia B clinical trial. And, uh, uh, you know, we'd like to uh, thank uh, all the patients and also our collaborators uh, in the Institution of uh, Hematology and the Blood Disease Hospital uh, in Tianjin, uh, Chinese Academy of uh, Medical Sciences. We also would like to thank the government support and also the, the investors uh, uh, give us a strong support. Okay, thank you.